Perception and cognition result from some sort of complex interplay between our genes and our experience. But in humans, the vast majority of experiments that have been conducted are on members of Western societies because that's where most of the scientists are. The experiences of those kinds of people are relatively homogeneous. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about how much variation is possible that might be driven by experiential variation. Now, one domain which this is extremely prominent is music. Music is present in all known cultures and this suggests some kind of a biological basis. However, music is also very different from one place to another. Now one of the key ingredients of music is pitch um, and pitch perception has been extremely well documented in Western listeners and there's a bunch of salient properties um, that we now know about. So one of those properties is the fact that pitch seems to have an upper and a lower limit. Now, even though we can hear frequencies that are as high as 20 kilohertz, if our hearing is very good, musical pitch perception tends to break down at about 4 kilohertz, which is around the highest tone of the piano. Now, if we play melody within the range of the piano, something like that, it's easy to recognize it. But if using a synthesizer, I will play you a melody outside the range of the piano, higher than 4 kHz, then it will be harder to recognize the melody and the sense of pitch will be less salient. So there's something different about the pitch information we can extract from low frequencies compared with high frequencies. Now one explanation for that is that there is a phenomenon that happens in the ear known as phase locking. So the action potentials, the spikes that are fired in response to sound, are temporally very precise. But there's a biophysical limitation to the ion channels in the ear that causes phase locking to break down when the frequencies get sufficiently high, typically above about 4 kilohertz in the animal species in which this has been measured. So one classical explanation for the upper limit of pitch is that there is a biological limit on the information that's coming out of the ear. Now, on the other hand, in Western music, there is also a limit to the pitches that are being used. For example, in a Western piano, the highest tone is about 4 kilohertz. Now, of course, it could be that Western instruments are adapted to the limits of pitch perception, but the other possibility is that our pitch perception is actually adapted to what we hear in Western music and pitch perception is not as good at very high frequencies because we just don't ever have to extract pitch information from frequencies that are that high. All right? So if you just test Western participants, it's always going to be ambiguous. Now another very salient property of pitch in Western music is that notes that are separated by octaves are treated as equivalent. A basic feature of Western music is so-called octave equivalence, where tones separate by an octave are the same. This is familiar to us uh, from using the same note name, for example here C, for tones at different registers. Here we have a western piano and the, the pattern of black and white keys are organizing octaves. There's also tons of octaves in western harmony. What's really fascinating is that octaves are also tightly linked to acoustics. So, for example, if two strings have the same tension and one is twice as long as the other, then this tone will sound an octave below. In order to get some insight into the potential role of biological constraints and experience with Western music in these kinds of phenomena, there's a society known as the Chimane in the Bolivian Amazon rainforest that we've been working with for the past eight years. These villages were geographically remote from these local cities, and we had to travel there by taking a canoe ride or a Cessna plane or a few hours in a track. And we found participants that have different exposure compared with the participant in the modern US city. They don't have electricity or running water, um, they'll make occasional trips into nearby towns to trade, but that's pretty much the extent of their contact with uh, the Western world. The experiment was very simple. We played 
tones that are well above the singing range, something like that, to the participant. And participant reproduce these tones, singing comfortable in their singing range. So for these tones, they sing something like ha ha. So when we do these experiments on Westerners, we find what you would expect. Namely that reproductions are good when the frequencies are in sort of the classical range of musical pitch and then deteriorate when the frequencies get too high. The pitch range of Chimani music is more limited compared with Western music. So they don't have a piano. And when we've gone to these villages and asked them to show us their instrument and play them to us, we realized that the upper limit that we have ever seen produced is usually under two kilohertz. All right, so if we really think that the, the limits of pitch perception are determined by the limits of what you hear in music, then we might expect, if anything, that the upper limit of pitch would be lower in the chimani. However, when we do these experiments and we measure the accuracy of their reproductions, instead we actually find that the dependence on frequency is actually remarkably similar. So as you can see in the graph, their overall accuracy is a little bit lower, but the dependence of accuracy on frequency is actually quite similar to what you see in Westerners. So that suggests that there is some non-musical constraint that's actually driving uh, this phenomenon, potentially some biological limit uh, on the, the upper limit of phase locking. Now to assess octave equivalence, we can take the exact same experiment and analyze it in a different way. We found that U.S. participants tried also create a relation, an octave relation between the tone that they heard and the tone that they sang back. So as to replicate what we call the chroma or the letter name of the note. So if you play them an A in an upper register, they'll tend to sing back an A in their singing range. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, uh. So this phenomenon is extremely pronounced in Western musician participants. It's reduced but still very salient in Western non-musicians. And the question is what was going to happen in, in the Chimane. And as you can see in this graph, chroma matching is absent in the Chimane. So even though they accurately reproduce the direction to some extent, the interval between the two notes, the absolute pitches that they produce are not related to the absolute pitches of the stimulus. And this suggests that octave equivalence is culturally contingent. So these experiments have given us new insights into the origins of different aspects of musical per pitch perception. And to me, what's most exciting about them is that they reveal dissociations between different parts of pitch perception that are pretty tightly linked in Westerners. And so I think they really suggest that pitch perception is a lot more interesting than you might expect. There's a whole bunch of different facets to it, and those can be teased apart if you respect the diversity of human experience.